Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 88 of Screw the Commute podcast. Today's episode is how to make a $50,000 video about you and your company for only pennies on the dollar. And we've estimated mine has brought in about $6 million. So I'll tell you about that in a minute. Hope you didn't miss episode 87 with Megan Grace. She told us all about how to understand and work with Generation Z. And wow, what a, what a conversation we had. Now, our podcast app is available in the App Store. Or you can go to screwthecommute.com slash app. That's A-P-P. We've got directions on how to use it, and it'll do all kinds of cool stuff so that you can take Screw the Commute with you on the road, not while you're commuting, okay? We don't want you commuting, all right? If you're going on vacation, that's perfect time to listen. If you're going to this grocery store, perfect time to listen. All right. Now, we're starting our monthly youth episodes where I highlight a young person doing great entrepreneurial things, and, and young means up to the early 20s. And, I mean, heck, I've got students in my mentor program where their eight-year-old wrote a couple books. So, so you can email me at orders at antion.com for details on how a young person can apply to be featured. Our first young person was Tiffany Hawkins, and she's a young girl helping other young girls. So make sure you check out her episode. All right, our sponsor is the VIP Video Weekend where you have two full days of video training. On day one, we shoot a bunch of videos for you in our high-definition studio. Then you get tutoring on cell phone apps that can outrageously do good edits on your videos. And then you learn lighting and you learn YouTube marketing and social media marketing using videos. Then on day two, we go out into the field where I teach you how to make a marketing video on location no matter where you are, at the beach, at the park, at various unique locations around Virginia Beach. And we only do this once or twice a year, but you can get together a group of four or five people, that's maximum because it's a small group, very high touch, and we'll do a custom weekend for you. And the link to check all this out will be in the show notes. All right, let's get to the main event. How to make a $50,000 video about you and your company for only pennies on the dollar. And, and first of all, why should you bother doing this? Well, I'll tell you why. I mean, it sets you far above your competitors. When you have a high-quality video production showing people what you're all about, you will move to the top of the heap when it comes to people making a decision of who to hire. Of course, there are plenty other factors involved when people decide to buy products and services. But if everything else was equal, your video will help put you over the top. And even if the competitor is a little better than you, your video could totally pass them up. So I'll give you the basic concept, and then I'll get into the money-saving details that can save you a fortune. The idea is that you shoot as much footage as you can using your phone or a camcorder. It doesn't matter as long as it's HD, like high definition. And they all are nowadays. Then you will tap cheap and free sources for video extras. Now I'll explain those later. And you find a video editor to put it all together for you on a freelance basis. Now, that's the basic idea. You shoot stuff, and someone else edits it into a final production. And, and before I go any further, make absolutely sure you back up everything you shoot, both to a local portable hard drive and to the cloud. All right, so what equipment will you need? Well, you don't really need very much. A modern cell phone or camcorder with an external microphone, a tripod, and some cheap lights. I mean, you don't even need the lights if you're pretty good at using natural lighting. And with regard to the external microphone, it has been somewhat problematic to plug in microphones 
to late model iPhones. So if you get a mic, make sure it's compatible with your iPhone. Now one thing you should do to better understand some of the things I talk about today is to go to greatinternetmarketingtraining.com and watch my video. It's on the home page, and you can click on a little TV monitor icon, which will take you to the video. Do that whenever you can, because this will make a lot more sense. One thing you'll notice as you start watching my video is a beautiful animated opening. As you go through the production, you see a similar bit of video every time we make a big transition to another section of the video. You'll also see a graphic with text in it from time to time that appears near the bottom of the screen. These are called lower thirds, and, and they match the look of the opening and the transition video. Now here's your first giant money-saving tip. You just purchased these video footage openings, transitions, and lower thirds from stock footage places like uh, rocketstock.com and and footagecrate.com. That's footage and then C-R-A-T-E.com. Absolutely don't let your video editor talk you into creating all this from scratch. That would cost a fortune and take a long time. And what they would do is probably go buy them from the same place and pretend like they made them for you on a custom basis. So don't let that happen. The next thing you need to know about is called a CVB. This is a great tip. That stands for Convention and Visitors Bureau. It's an agency that's entire mandate is to encourage people to come to your area. Now you have to live in a decent sized area to find them, but your tax dollars funds them. So you can get access to all the spectacular video footage they use to promote your area. I mean, you might have to pay a small fee for duplication, but some of the footage would cost you tens of thousands of dollars if you had to shoot it yourself. And when you watch my production over at greatinternetmarketingtraining.com, you'll see aerial footage of the beach, the ocean, and the marinas around Virginia Beach, where I live. I mean, I've got footage of fine dining and shopping and parks and all kinds of things that I used in my video. So this is not only an enormous cost saver, it really ups the production value of your video. See, so far, you are shooting your own footage and collecting footage that you have the rights to use. That's what we're doing here. So what should you shoot? Well, here are some miscellaneous things you could shoot, and, and then I'll get into some more specifics. You could shoot your office or home office. Shoot shots of the area you were in. Shoot you working with a client. Shoot what you do when you work behind the scenes for a client. These are called candids. And for instance, let's, let's say you refinish furniture. Show the steps you go through when working on a client's job. Show the care that you take. Show the high quality products you use. Show how much time it takes. Show the tools you use. Just shoot anything you do to work on a client's job. You can shoot your business philosophy. Talk about the benefits the client will derive from working with you. Show any publicity you've been in. If it's mostly print, make a collage out of it and either shoot it with a video camera or shoot still pictures and tell your editor to creatively fly in the pictures or use the Ken Burns effect. A video editor will know what that is. Testimonials. You want to shoot testimonials of happy clients. And I found the best way to do this is what I call 45-degree testimonials. See, most people are not comfortable looking directly into a camera and spitting out a great testimonial. What we do, and you'll see it in my video, is put the camera at a 45-degree angle to the person. Then we have someone who is not in the picture ask them a question. The person repeats the question and gives their answer. Then we cut out the voice of the person asking them the question. All right, so here's an example. The off-camera person, 
This is the off-camera person. Joe, what did you like best about your visit to Tom's Retreat Center? And then this is what Joe says. What I liked best about the Retreat Center was the close access to Tom to see what he does on a daily basis. You see, then we cut out the off-camera person, and you get a beautiful testimonial very quickly because the person isn't all nervous looking into the camera. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is what I call the bed. This is the backbone of the video, or basically the structure where all the shots you took revolve around. I call it the bed. That's a kind of a theatrical term. Now, in my production, everything revolves around me sitting in front of my fireplace. The way this evolved is the guy that taught me this method told me to write down all the major points I wanted to get in the video. Then I sat in my chair across from the video camera and said all the things that I said in the final production. You see them right there when you look at it. But guess what? The things I said while sitting in the chair are not in the same order they ended up in the final production. The editor moved them all around to fit the flow of the production. Another thing you'll notice about my video is the framing of my face. Now, in the beginning of the video, the camera is pulled back showing more of the fireplace. And <laughs> maybe, maybe the camera guy thought I, I was too scary to do close-ups. <laughs> and, and, you know, actually, he's right. See, in the beginning, when you don't know me well, it's too intrusive to have my big, intimidating face filling up the screen of your computer or TV. As the production goes along and you get to know me, the camera gets tighter and tighter to my face. More intimate, in other words. All this was done in editing. The actual camera never got closer and it didn't zoom in. If we would have used the camera to zoom in, we would have been stuck with the exact order of the shots as I shot them. Letting the editor do the electronic zooming when he needed or she needed it is a better way to go and gives you way more flexibility where the shots end up in the final production. As I was sitting in the chair talking about all the great stuff about my program, the editor found shots to insert in the video that illustrated what I was talking about. If I was talking about scammer marketers telling you how to get rich but they're broke driving broken down cars, well, the editor showed a picture or video of a broken down cheap car. If I was talking about all the nice things about the retreat center, the editor showed video either myself or my staff shot of hot tubs and massage chairs, the theater, the pool, the tennis court, and all that stuff. All the while, I'm sitting in the chair talking, but you can't see me. You just hear me and this is called voiceover. I really suggest you watch the video over at greatinternetmarketingtraining.com and you'll see these elements in a real production that made tons of money. All right, music. Well, appropriate music can really put a fine polish on your production. We happen to use Sonic Fire, and you can find it at uh, smartsound.com. Now, you probably don't want to buy this program. What you should do is discuss with uh, what experience your editor has with copyright-free music before you hire them. And you must absolutely confirm the music is copyright-free. You do not want to get a federal lawsuit against you for using popular music or music that's copyright. And yeah, you could buy a license to use popular music, but it's a big hassle and not really necessary for the success of your production. And another place to get copyright music is musicbakery.com. All right, calls to action. See, many salespeople forget the most important part of their sales presentation. And yes, a video is a sales presentation. They forget to get people to do something. I mean, call for an appointment, email for information, download a catalog, or whatever you want them to do should be in the video. 
Remember, you will not be there when they're watching the video. It must get the sales job done for you. All right, another thing you can put in is, and it's an easy to do addition to your production, is credits at the end. Now, if you were the videographer, the talent, the editor, the duplicator, and caterer, <laughs> all right, it would look stupid to put your name over and over again, and that would actually detract from the overall production and make you look stupid. But if there were lots of people involved, you could name your clients and their websites. You could name your employees that helped, the editor, the duplicator, if you made DVDs. You even put the names of a dog that was seen in the video. So you can check out my credits to see, see what I did. Now, editing. The, the bulk of the money I spent on my production was in editing. For a half-hour production, I spent 200 hours of editing at $15 per hour for a total of about $3,000. Now, quotes I got on the open market for this entire production ran from $36,000 to over $50,000. So my production was quite a bargain. That's what I'm trying to teach you here. I made mine purposely 28 and a half minutes so I could show it in half-hour time slots on least access TV. And I only ended up doing that a little. You could easily cut your final length down to as little as 10 minutes and still have a spectacular sales tool you could be proud of and that would save you lots of editing time and a lot of money, too. Now, distribution. Well, currently, we primarily distribute the production on DVD and on my website. No doubt it will find its way onto the TV on demand channels I'm developing for Roku TV and Amazon Fire TV. Now, as part of my contract when I speak, my DVD and other promotional literature must be given out at registration. And this has made me a fortune when people take the DVD up to their room and watch it before the speaking event even starts. And that primes them to buy my stuff before even considering the other speaker. Now, you may not speak for a living, but you can give this out in your store, you can put it on your website and do all kinds of things with it. One other thing I do with the video is have it running continuously at my booth when I'm at a speaking engagement, or you might be at a trade show. I put it in a portable DVD player with several sets of headphones so people can watch and listen to it in the midst of the chaos normally at a trade show, uh, which is part of the public speaking event. All right, duplication labeling. Well, my volume is high enough where we bought our own CD DVD duplicating machine, but that's pretty pricey. So you can look for DVD CD duplication in your area and that'll save on the shipping. Or you could try a well-known company called discmakers.com, D-I-S-C, discmakers.com. So here's some more miscellaneous tips. You must have, and let me say must, have good audio. People will put up with shaky video, but if they can't hear it, you're sunk. And speaking of shaky video, I've had two retired Hollywood people work for me over the years. One was an Emmy-nominated editor for the Winds of War miniseries, and he also started on the original Star Wars movies. And the other was a celebrity promo producer that worked for just about every celebrity you ever heard of. Both of them told me to shoot everything like crazy and shoot tons of handheld footage. They said a good editor will take the motion of the handheld videos and create excitement in the video. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't use a tripod on certain shots that need to be still. But don't be afraid to shoot handheld. The promo director also said he used to have 50 people to run and get him coffee, million-dollar cameras, million-dollar lighting setups, and then he looked at me and he stopped and held his hand out as if taking a selfie. And he said, nowadays, this is an acceptable video shot. And I know that I've made as much as $53,000 in a couple days on a handheld selfie video I shot out in, out in front of my house. Okay, next tip is pay attention to lighting and just make sure you can clearly see faces. 
be careful with bright sunlight because it causes shadows and squinting and sweating if you're outdoors. And be careful with backlighting where a bright light behind someone makes their face go too dark, like maybe if they were in front of a window or something. Then another big cost-saving tip is to review all your footage and mark the time on each shot for the best parts or the best shot. If you make the editor look at every piece of out of focus footage or shots with your fingers accidentally over the lens, you'll be paying them for nothing to sift through a bunch of garbage. However, don't be too quick to throw away a shot. The editor might see a half a second of the shot that he or she needs to finish a, a great edit. Okay, so that's it. At the very least, start shooting as much of your business operations as you can. Collect the footage all in one place and back it up. You hear me? Back it up in another place off-premise. And don't have it on your laptop and save it to a hard drive in your house because fire, flooding, and damage can make all your backups disappear. So have this stuff backed up to a portable hard drive and also to the cloud. I just can't emphasize that enough. Okay, that's it. So check out our sponsor, which is the VIP Video Weekend, where you have two full days of video training. On day one, we shoot a bunch of videos of you in our high-definition studio. Then uh, you can get tutoring on cell phone apps that can out do outrageously good edits right on your phone nowadays. Then you learn lighting, YouTube marketing, and social media marketing using video. Then on day two, we go out in a field where I teach you how to make a marketing video on location no matter where you are. You could be at the beach, at a park, all kinds of places, and you'll be able to make a, a video that matches your marketing message based on where you are. Those are great because they look really, really impressive on site in the moment. Now, we only do this once or twice a year, but you can get together a group of four or five people maximum, and we'll do a custom weekend for you. Now, when I say five people maximum, that doesn't mean you can't bring assistance that help you with clothing and your hair if you feel like it and makeup, and they can watch the training, but uh, only four or five people actually do the shooting. All right, check out the link to that in the show notes. And the next episode is episode 89 with Stan Walters, the lie guy. He's been to prison 36 times to date, and he's offered to take me with him. <laughs> See, Stan is a deception expert who trains law enforcement and military in interrogation techniques, but the techniques also work if you're hiring people to see if they're lying on their applications or if there's employee disputes and you got to get to the bottom of it. So don't miss uh, his episode 80. Nine. So this has been one of our Monday in-depth training sessions. We do Mondays. I do a topic that's either made or saved me a lot of money. And then on Wednesdays and Fridays, we do uh, interviews with great entrepreneurs. And then once a month, we're starting our youth series where we highlight uh, some youth that's doing great entrepreneurial things up until their 20s. And after that, their, their early 20s. After that, it would be, a, if, if you know anybody, it would be a candidate for a regular. All right, that's it. We'll catch you on the next episode.